Large families were quite usual during this period. What was much less common was Darwin's overt expression of the love and affection he felt for his children. Well, his relationship with his children was exceptionally warm for that period. Um, his children were allowed to run relatively free around the house to come into his study and talk to him, and their memories are, are very warm towards him. They remember being able to work with him, for him playing with them, and scientific experiments. This was quite different from his relations with his father, who was a very stern, rather fierce, and feared character in his childhood. Um, Darwin became very close to his father, but only really after he returned from the voyage of the Beagle. Darwin was explicit about the personal consequences of publishing on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favoured races in the struggle for life. I shall soon be viewed as the most despicable of men, the most arrogant, odious beast that ever lived. The conviction that public denunciation awaited him was a major factor in his decision to defer publication. He had this text sitting in a box for nearly 20 years, in fact with a, a note attached to his wife saying that if he died um, and she found this, could she publish it? Darwin's reluctance to face possible abuse outweighed his conviction that his theory was valid. The Great Exhibition, which opened in 1851, eight years before Darwin published The Origin of Species, was a declaration of England's belief in its manufacturing supremacy. While manufacturers welcomed science as an industrial tool, the ruling elite did not want science to challenge those political and religious ideals which were used to reinforce the status quo. The year of the Great Exhibition was a watershed for Darwin. In that year, the death of his ten-year-old daughter, Anne, destroyed any vestige of belief Darwin had in a personal god. Certainly, the death of his daughter was a great blow and a great trial to his Christian faith. The loss of his child was very important to him and disorientated him, as it does with every, anyone who loses a child. And it's very difficult in those circumstances to, even for a, a historian working with lots of papers, you know, it's very difficult for such a historian to plot a sequence of events where one thing leads to another. Fundamental to Christian religious belief was the book of Genesis, the biblical story of creation which taught that the source of life was God. This was not a matter of science, but of faith. It was believed that the different species were arranged hierarchically, man being the highest species. The fact that evolutionary theories questioned this most basic tenet of religious belief was partly responsible for Darwin's reluctance to publish The Origin of Species. I don't think that either then or today there was anything in Darwin, either The Origin of the Species or The Des Descent of Man, that challenges the teaching of the Church. It's part of that continuing process whereby scientists discover more about the real world and theologians then have to work with that, work with those discoveries, and take those advances in knowledge about the real world and hold them beside the revelation in the New Testament and work with them together. Now that's the task of a theologian. An influencing factor in Darwin's reluctance to publish may have been the savage treatment meted out to the book the vestiges of the natural history of creation. The secretive writer was the Edinburgh publisher Robert Chambers. This work emerged in the hungry forties when the country was under threat from widespread social unrest. In this climate, any challenge to the authority of the church was seen as subversive. There were a variety of evolutionary theories, but none of them were None of them were as cohesive as what Darwin actually ma managed to pull together. Various people, for example, the scientist Lamarck, um, had come up to g with theories that led towards evolution, but insofar as they were, they were necessarily denying you know, individual creation of species by God, 
Uh, and that was what led to the reaction against those theories, and it was that reaction that Darwin feared. One man whose contribution to 19th century science was an important formative influence on Darwin was Charles Lyell. In 1830, Lyell published Principles of Geology, the book which was to contribute to Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin was convinced by Lyell's concept that the Earth had undergone a process of gradual but persistent change. Darwin had already begun to believe in a natural and not divine origin of species. His own studies added other vital elements which were to shape his theory. Darwin argued that existence itself was a battle and that life forms which could not adapt to nature's changes faced extinction. He was convinced that the species which possessed the most advantageous characteristics would survive and evolve. His scientific observations had revealed the random variations which nature produces in every generation. Darwin reasoned that where those variations enabled a species to adapt to circumstance, then eventually a new species could evolve. This was natural selection at work. Considering that Darwin was writing more than a hundred years ago, uh, he is really astonishingly up to date, al almost miraculously prescient. The main thing that Darwin got wrong w was his view of genetics. He had no idea about genetics, and obviously genetics, the phenomenon of heredity, is extremely important to the theory. All Darwin knew was that in some vague sense, like begets like. He knew that something went through from one generation to the next. At the time, it was thought that inheritance was blending. That's to say you got some sort of substance from the mother and a substance from the father, and you mix them together, rather like mixing two pots of paint, and the child was some kind of blend of the two parents. Mix red paint and blue paint and you get purple paint. And it was pointed out at the time in one of the hostile reviews of The Origin of Species that if that were really how heredity worked, and at that time everybody thought it was, then there would never be enough variation for natural selection to work upon. You mix your red and your blue paint and you get purple, and no matter how many times you mix purple paint with purple paint, you never reconstitute red and blue. The variation just goes. Actually, of course, it was a criticism of observed facts. Any fool could see that as the generations go by, as a matter of fact, variation does not get used up. We're not uh, much less different from each other than our grandparents were. Having drawn up the outline of his theory, Darwin began the long process of meticulous research which eventually would form part of the origin of species. These critically important years were spent in the Kentish village of Down. It was here at Down House that Darwin found his ideal environment. The house and grounds enabled him to combine two aspects of life which were vitally important to him, his family and his work. When he published the theory of evolution, he became a famous figure, and many scientists from abroad came to, on pilgrimage here, and came to see him, and he would show them the hothouse, where we are now, mm -hmm. and take them also around the grounds. Mm -hmm. So it was a center of pilgrimage for scientists. Mm -hmm. Darwin's identification of natural selection as a formative influence on the process of evolution did not emerge instantly as a coherent theory. He spent two years formulating an explanation for his findings. In 1838, Darwin became convinced that he was looking at a process of natural selection. One of the external factors which shaped his thinking was an essay on human population by the economist Thomas Malthus. It was the essay's identification of the human struggle for existence which made an impact on Darwin. He realized that in their struggle for existence, the birds and animals of the Galapagos Islands had evolved to survive the unique conditions of each island. For two decades,